Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First off, I'd like to say, Kahala, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect, the Akim, that's pushing this word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. For the few sincere sisters who watch and believe, Shalom to you as well. Shalom to all of the new fruit, the new believers, new viewership coming into this faith. Uh, just back with another lesson. And I just wanted to go into how our righteousness, uh, us being the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, it comes through faith. Because pursuant to the works of the law, we would all be condemned if our righteousness came through the works of the law. So that's why we heavily uh, emphasize faith. And you've had other Israelite camps, I believe it was IUIC at one time, they were uh, jokingly saying that Great Millstone GMS is a we're faith based Israelites. Well, hey, we'll we'll wear that badge with honor and, and dignity and pride, so to speak, because we understand that according to the scriptures, that that's the only way that we're seen as righteousness is through our faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. Because according to the works of the law, we would all be condemned, man, because you can't we can't keep the laws perfectly in this flesh. And that's why ultimately, like you got these bug outs talking about we in the new covenant already. The complete fulfillment of the new covenant is going to be in the kingdom, which the kingdom of heaven is going to play out on the earth. And that's when the Israelites, we're going to have the law, statutes and commandments in our inward parts pursuant to the prophecy in Jeremiah 31 and 31. But I'm going to just hit some precepts, Lord willing. This is just, you know, exhort the body and just edify that in of our own merits, uh, we're all unclean, man. We're filthy. So it's through our faith in Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, the heavenly father in the name of his only begotten son. That's how we're seen as righteousness. That's how we're pure. But I'll start off here in Isaiah 64 and 6. It says, but we are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousness are salaki and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. So that's clear to the point. We're an unclean thing because it's a constant war between the spirit and the flesh. The Apostle Paul in his epistle in Romans, the seventh chapter, went into that, man. It's a constant battle. We're in these bodies of corruption, man. So it's impossible in these mortal bodies to be able to keep to keep the works of the law perfectly man and if you go in one law if you go off in one law you you uh you guilty of all man so it says i'll read it again isaiah 64 and 6 but we are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousness are as filthy rags and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away so in this flesh, we're going to continue to sin. It's just nothing but perpetual sin in this flesh, man. So that's why it's beautiful that we have grace. That's why it's beautiful that the Lord is accepting us and giving us access to him through his son's blood through faith, man. It's a beautiful thing, man. You know, we're basically getting the promise of circumcision being uncircumcised, just like our forefather Abraham, man. Meaning uncircumcised, you know, in the in the in the in the spirit, because a lot of us, we didn't grow up in the customs of Israelites, man. We grew up uh, celebrating and uh, keeping a lot of these pagan customs here in Great Babylon, America. But through uh, grace, through faith, you know, in the Lord, we have access to be considered uh, the righteous seed, you know, all through faith, man. So that's why we can't boast about what we can do as far as the works of the law, man, because we all go off. We all need mercy at the end of the day, you know? <clears throat> but I'm going to go to the next script. Go to the New Testament. St. John chapter 1. Salak. I went to St. John chapter 6. St. John chapter 1. In verse 17, it says, For the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah, or Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, you know, the one who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, which we know in the Hebrew, his uh, true name is Yahweh Shah. So it says, for the law was given by Moses, 
but grace and truth came by Yahweh Shah. So the point being made, the law of Moses, we're condemned under that law because why we can't keep it perfectly, man. So it's beautiful that we've been given access to grace. Going on to the next precept. I'm going to go to Romans, the fourth chapter. And this is one of my favorite chapters. I would, you know, suggest, you know, all brothers, you know, if you haven't went into this in a while, I would read the whole chapter. But just for, you know, time's sake and just trying to hit certain points, I'm going I'm to start off in verse 13, I believe I want to start off. Man, there's so much good stuff in here. And when you read it in the NLT, you know, the way, it, you know, it, it explains it in the NLT is beautiful. But I'm going to start off here in Romans 4 and 13. It says... For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. So the promise didn't come by the law, man, because we're condemned under that old covenant. Why? Because we couldn't keep it perfectly, man. It says for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So there it goes right there. And I'm probably going to end up. Titling the lesson something to that effect that our righteousness comes through faith, man. Because the fact that Abraham believed it was accounted unto him for righteousness, man. Even though when he came, uh, or when he came to Melchizedek, he was he was uncircumcised, man. We already know uh, his father uh, Terah. You know he was heavy into idol worship. You know that's why eventually Abraham. He had to uh, depart from his father's household and he took his nephew Lot with him to be able to serve the Lord, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And that took faith. So the point being made, Abraham, our forefather's righteousness, it came through faith, man. It says verse 14, but don't get it twisted because faith without works is dead. Once you get on a level of faith. Then through that process of faith, you're going to want to be obedient to the will of the Lord, man. But right now in these bodies, man, we're, we're not perfect. Romans 4 and 14, it says, for if they for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. <laughs> so those proclaiming and boasting of the law, man, that makes faith void. Then what need would it have been for Yahweh Shai to go up on that cross and be crucified, man, for those that are so clean and so perfect in doing the works and keeping the law, man? No. It's of heavy necessity that we're under grace and we have faith in the Lord, man, and that we can be accounted as the righteous seed through our faith. Romans 4 and 14, it says, for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect. So the promise of our father, father Abraham that will fall on his son Isaac and then onto Jacob and his 12 sons. If it were of the law, it would be of none effect, man. Because the a promise, it wasn't established upon the law, it was established upon faith. Verse 15, it says, because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. So that's clear to the point, too. We're all condemned under the law. When you read some of the laws, man, you always get cut. You always get cut, man. Now, it does tell you in Judges 5 and 11, we rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. And that's because we can't keep it perfectly. When you're rehearsing something, that means you may mess up. We're just practicing, so to speak. None of us ain't probably keeping the, the Sabbath, the Sabbath days perfectly, keeping the Passover perfectly. But we do give an, uh, uh, an, an effort through our faith. So the Lord uh, accounts it as righteousness through our faith. Verse uh, 16, it says, therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law. But to that also, which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. And I'm going to see how it reads it in the NLT. I'm going to read Romans 4 and 16 in the NLT. It says, so the promise is received by faith. 
So the only way we're going to be heirs of the promises of our forefathers starting back to Abraham, you know, Isaac and Jacob, it's all through faith, man. And it's going to explain. It says, so the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift. So it's nothing that we did in these bodies that would merit us getting a free gift. It says it is given as a free gift. Gift, And we are all certain to receive it. And that's talking about the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans, mostly here in Great Babylon, America, and scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, according to prophecy. I got to read this again in the NLT. Romans 4 and 16, it says, so the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift. So we didn't do nothing to merit the gift of faith that we've been given, man. That's why there's no reason for anybody to get high minded and proud or entitled. This is a gift. It says, and we are all certain to receive it, whether or not we live according to the law of Moses. So whether we live according to the law of Moses, the gift is going to be given to the elect, the gift of faith to receive the promise, man. It says, and we are all certain to receive it, whether or not we live according to the law of Moses. If we have faith like Abraham's and I quoted earlier that the fact that Abraham believed it was accounted to him for righteousness. So we are righteous in the sight of the heavenly father and his son, but our righteousness, it comes through faith. Not in anything that we're doing now through faith, you're going to want to establish godly behavior, righteous behavior. But it's times where we go off. And that's why we where we have the grace. <laughs> It says, for Abraham is the father of all who believe. So the fact that we believe and have faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, that's going to be accounted unto us for righteousness, just like our forefather Abraham. And at that top part of verse 16 in the NLT, it says, so the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift because Jake could get the boasting, thinking that they're on a level, thinking that they're doing certain things according to their own merit, man. And I'm going to break down that faith is pretty much a gift. This is Ephesians 2 and 8. It says, for by grace are ye saved through faith. So that's the only way we saved. You got these proud, high-minded, so-called Christians in these churches talking about they're already saved and sanctified. For one, the question would be to ask, what are you saved from? And then two, the scripture says here, it says, Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of the most high. So we've all been given the gift of faith. And I'm talking about the elect, the hopeful elect, the brothers that have been given the gift of faith to go out and, and push this truth, man, and make their bodies a living sacrifice. Verse nine, it says, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it's not our faith that we've been given, that free gift that we've been given is not of ourselves because, you know, we would all start boasting about what we think we're doing. So the most high, he set it up that way, that it would be by grace through faith that we're going to be saved, that we're going to be considered righteousness, man. That we're going to be considered that righteous seed. And it all goes back, you know, to disobedience of our people. You can go into the curses in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. You know, we, we, we uh, disobeyed the law, statutes and commandments of the Heavenly Father. That's why we're in captivity unto this day. The nation of Israel has been in, under captivity, various captivities under all of these different heathen nations. But we're about to enter into a new covenant, man. Because you got the bug out saying that we're already in the new covenant. Now, we're in that process of about to come into the new covenant, but we're not going to be fully in the new covenant until we're in the kingdom, man. And faith is so necessary. That's the point I was trying to make as well, man. You know, it's hella necessary right now. Call Allah, y'all, Bashim, y'all, Shah for grace and faith, man. That we have access to be received as sons, to inherit the promises, to receive the kingdom, man. 
I'll read this and I'll end out the lesson. I'll this is Hebrews the eighth chapter. I'll start at verse six. It says, But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises, man. You know, so the covenant, you know, is still that that agreement is still uh binding between the, the same parties, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh the Most High Son, and the Israelites, man. Because you got these so called Christians talking about all nations can come under the new covenant, you know. And it's established upon better promises, man. So it, it is the same agreement, but it's established upon better promises and the fact that we're not condemned if we go off in the law, man. Verse seven, it says, for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second for finding fault with them. And that's talking about those who couldn't keep it. The Israelites, man, because only the law, statutes and commandments was given to the nation of Israel. Pursuant when you read uh, Psalms 147 and 19. Back in Hebrews eight and eight, it says for finding fault with them meaning those who couldn't keep it, the Israelites, for finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. So the Lord, he's established a new covenant, man, not in according to the old covenant, meaning the, the law of Moses, man, when we were coming out of the land of Egypt during the time of the Exodus, man. But the covenant that's been established right now is based upon faith, man. And I'll just keep reading. I'll read 10. It says uh, Hebrews 8 and 10 and really. This is uh, verse 10 is quoting the prophecy in Jeremiah 31 and 31 Hebrews 8 and 10. It says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. And that covenant is, is never changed. It's always been between the most high son and the house in the nation of Israel. It says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and I will write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a, a, a God or a power and they shall be to me a people. So in the kingdom, we're not going to go off anymore. We're going to truly be righteous according to the law. Why? Because the laws is going to be written in our hearts, man. The Lord is going to turn that that fleshly heart, that stony heart into a heart of flesh. Meaning that we're, we're going to we're not going to be capable of sinning anymore, man. You know, but right now we're under grace because we're in this flesh, these mortal bodies where we can't keep the law perfectly, man. You know, so the only way we can be considered righteous is through faith. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And furthermore, I'll just read verse 11. And this is showing also too to the bug outs that we're not in the new covenant yet, man. Hebrews 8 and 11, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. So we're not going to have to teach each other in the kingdom. You're not going to have to remind the brother, hey, you know, the, you know, the Shabbat coming in tonight. Oh, you know, the, the you know, the, the, the Passover next week. And, uh, you know, you can't eat that, brother. You know, whatever the case may be, we're not going to have to teach each other in the kingdom anymore. We're all going to be righteous according to the law. Because the Lord is going to write it in our mind, man. But right now, the only righteousness that, that righteousness that we have is through our faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And of course, through faith, you know, we try to the best of our ability to, obedi to be obedient to the will of the Lord and keep the laws to the best of our ability, man. But if we go off, we're not condemned, man, because we're justified through faith. So... With all being said, I'll just end out the short lesson on that. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim Rakakwadash. 
Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, peace and blessings to the elect.